Thank you all for uh, joining us from uh, from home. And uh, we are happy that so many people are joining us uh, during this online information meeting. So what uh, we will do today is we will give you an overview about the program. We will explain to you why economics and business economics at the UFA. And uh, we have also our students who will share their experiences with you. So I hope that at the end of uh, today, you will have a better idea about what our program is about and uh, that you will be convinced that we offer a very interesting program that offers many opportunities uh, for the future. So let's um, start with how the program looks like. Yeah, if I get this wrong, of course, yes. So it's a very standard program that we offer. That means that it is a three year bachelor program. So that means that uh, we offer in total uh, three years, six semesters, and uh, the structure is such that the first one and a half year, so the first three semesters are combined. That means that you get the foundations in economics and business economics. And then at the end of the first semester of year two, you choose either the major economics or the major business economics. The benefits of this structure is that you get a very broad knowledge in both economics and business. This is very important also when later on you start working somewhere and you uh, need to talk to people from other disciplines, then you share uh, the language. But it also has an additional benefit that you can postpone your choice between economics and business economics until the end uh, of semester one, year two. That means that in the first one and a half year, you can experience different types of courses and uh, these uh, courses can give you a better idea about whether economics or business economics fits better your interests. So how does year one look like? It's very standard if we compare it to uh, many other uh, programs in the Netherlands. So we offer courses in economics, we offer courses in business economics, and uh, so in that respect, we don't uh, differ too much from other programs and we offer mathematics and statistics, which are important uh, courses within economics. So economics is, and, and business economics is a very quantitative study. So uh, mathematics and statistics will be an important part of the education. Of course, we don't offer a mathematics education, so it will all be applied mathematics and statistics to economic problems or business economic problems. So in, uh, what we have is we have in total uh, within each semester three periods. So period one and period two are large blocks. These are blocks of eight weeks. Period three is a short block that contains four weeks in total. So in the large blocks, we offer the economic courses micro one and macro one. And uh, we offer the business economics courses, financial accounting one, economics of markets and organizations and finance one. And uh, as I mentioned before, we offer mathematics and statistics. And in the short blocks in period three of each semester, we offer skills courses. In the first semester, you get trained in academic writing. And in the second semester, you get trained in doing your own empirical research. So these are more project based courses. So these, most of the courses are very similar to what is offered in other education programs, especially in the Netherlands. So there's not too much difference. So where we differ uh, to some extent is the principles of economics and business one course. So in this course, it will be the first time that you get exposed to uh, main concepts in economics and business. Uh, and you will start reading seminal papers in the different fields. Furthermore, you will already be exposed to get guest lectures by professors in different fields. So this is a great opportunity to see how people in the field are thinking or looking at economics and business problems. And you will be trained in academic thinking and writing. So you will be uh, working on essays, uh, which will help you to train your uh, writing skills. So then in year two, you choose your major. So first semester is still combined for everyone. So that means that um, everyone uh, follows the same courses, but then at the end of semester one, you choose your major 
and either you choose the major economics or business economics. And then in the second semester, you get some additional advanced courses, either in economics or advanced course courses in business economics. And then in year three, you have a lot of choices to make. So in the first semester, we offer many opportunities. So you can choose yourself what fits best for you. So we offer the opportunity to, to do an internship. That means that you apply your knowledge within a firm. So you do a very practical application of the theory that you have learned throughout your education. We offer the opportunity to study abroad. This is you go to an other university, one of our partner universities, and you follow a semester there. This gives you the opportunity to learn a new educational system and also to learn a new culture. So if you have questions about studying abroad, we also have uh, some colleagues uh, that will be answering questions in the Q&A uh, um, about uh, studying abroad. And then uh, the third option that we offer is to do a minor. A minor is a structured program that is offered within our university, uh, different faculties, or uh, even within other universities. It's structured in the sense that the courses form a package of a semester, so of 30 credits. And um, you can think of many um, minors, uh, and some are very close to economics. So we offer, for example, a minor in sustainability and economics. And some students, they have very broad interest and they want to do a, a very different minor. So for example, art history. So a minor is really like a structured program that you can choose and you can do uh, what fits your interests. So the first semester of year three is really about you deciding and you designing your own program. Then in the second semester, you follow a specialization. So but what is economics and what is business economics about? So let me start with economics. So economics is about the use and allocation of scarce alternative applicable resources. It's about economic decisions of individuals and countries and the implications of economic policy. So for example, all of you have to make a decision. So which program to follow? So which university? If you choose to do economics and business economics at the UFA, you cannot at the same time follow another education at uh, another university. So you have to make an active choice because time is scarce. But it is also about uh, other decisions and how uh, it affects economic policy or how economic policy affects decisions of firms, of individuals, of countries. Let me give an example. So recently uh, it was again in the news. So Google is currently fighting against a record EU fine. So in 2018, the EU imposed a fine of $5.1 billion in um, an antitrust case. So the idea was that the EU was uh, fining Google for violating antitrust regulation. So they were offering their services, the Google services, very actively on, for example, Android uh, systems, without giving the consumers too many opportunities to switch to other suppliers of these services. So what the EU decided was that uh, Google was violating uh, their dominant position in the market. And uh, so the, the, they are still fighting. So in the sense that they are still trying to get uh, this fine uh, uh, canceled by the EU. But uh, so let's see what happens in the coming weeks, whether they manage or not, or whether they will be indeed uh, held accountable for this abuse of uh, dominant position. So uh, economics is micro and macroeconomics. Then within business economics, we think more about using the economic toolkit and applying it to decisions of firms. And what we can think about is uh, investment decisions, financing decisions of firms, so think, for example, of uh, Cool Blue, who is announcing to go um, to have an IPO. And uh, the idea is that uh, it will likely uh, be um, um, on the uh, Amsterdam Stock Exchange uh, in the coming uh, months. 
Um, so the idea is that they uh, want to have more flexible financing opportunities. So one way to obtain this is by uh, having an IPO. Uh, but business economics is much more. It's about also information, how you measure it, how you report it. It's about how you uh, organize your firm. So how do you motivate employees? And within uh, business economics, we offer three specializations. So the specialization accounting and control, the specialization finance, and the specialization organizational economics. So business is economics is using the toolbox that you have from economics that we have obtained in the first one and a half year and applying it to very specific business problems. Think about financing, measuring of information or reporting, and organization of the firm. But what might be equally important is, of course, what will I do after I graduated from economics and business economics? So the good thing is that uh, the opportunities uh, after an education in economics and business economics are endless. So think about any large firm, they will need a good economist. So um, the prospects, uh, career prospect perspectives of our graduates are very good. What we still observe is that many of our graduates uh, continue to do a master to further specialize in an area, but some go into the labor market and we, we see it um, every time more uh, that students choose to do to work after they graduate from the bachelor and not go immediately into a master. So what do our, where do our students end up? So in the end, the, what we see is that many of our students end up in government or nonprofit sector, in banks and industry, in consultancy, we have many uh, students, a few start their own company and a few uh, continue within university. So we have students, graduates all over the place. So at the Dutch central bank, in the big banks, uh, but also in large firms like uh, Philips, PLM, and uh, also in the big consultancy uh, firms like Price, Water Cooper, KPMG, uh, Ernst & Young, Deloitte. Uh, so our graduates are everywhere. Uh, we have uh, good ties with uh, the businesses in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands, and uh, also our study associations offer quite a bit of career events where you can get in contact with different uh, organizations and this might be a step towards um, a nice career outside after your program in economics and business economics. So I will now give uh, the word back to Paula. She will tell you something more about making the right choice and uh, our students will hopefully be able to give you some additional uh, information about how they experienced our program. Hello again, and uh, thank you, Sylvia, for the presentation. Um, and uh, welcome again to all the students also who joined a bit, uh, prospective students who joined a bit um, later. Maybe my name is Paula, and I'm a study advisor here with the Faculty of Economics and Business. And a big part of my job is to help students make study-related choices. And that's why I'm here today to help you find out if this program, Economics and Business Economics, is the right match um, for you. But uh, yeah, who can tell you uh, more about the program than our students? We are really happy to have you here. So I will give the floor to Tomasz, um, who will tell you a bit more about his reasons for choosing for this program and his experiences. All right, thank you. Um, hello, everybody. And um, yeah, a bit about myself and you know why did I even choose to study EBE? Well, the case is that throughout my high school, I was interested in all subjects ranging from physics to chemistry, mathematics, and so on. And as such, I really wanted to do a field, work in, in a field that would be very multidimensional. And even though it seems like economics is, yeah, math, statistics, modeling, theory, behavioral studies, my deep belief is that economics, and if you want to be a great economist, you have to at the same time know law, politics, psychology, history, and many more. Also, there are probably 
10 programs in the Netherlands, maybe more, maybe a bit less, that have a very similar scope to economics and business economics. So why did I choose UFA? Truth be told, I it was a last um, it was a last minute change of heart. Since uh, I've always been considering going abroad, uh, I'm originally from the Czech Republic, and economics is okay at the universities there, but you know it's not top notch. Well, I was thinking about countries where to go, and based on affordability and basically the value that you get for your money. Um, yes, that's um, a bit of an economic thinking there. I chose to go either to the Netherlands and to Denmark. And in the Netherlands, I originally applied for the University of Groningen in the north of the country. But then, literally three days before the deadlines were about to close, I thought, oh, okay, yeah, it, it's a nice city, but it's a bit far away. And... You know, Amsterdam is, after all, the pulsating heart of the Netherlands, so why not go there? And that's how I applied to UFA. So if it were not for those, for that random moment, I could have been studying in Groningen now. But ever since then, I've everybody's been telling me that I made the right decision. Maybe they're biased, but, you know, I'm enjoying it very much, to be honest. Um, and that's the three years now probably most of you are thinking about what to do after, what to do after your bachelor's. Um, me personally, I do not intend to stay in the Netherlands. Um, I plan to do a master, definitely, but maybe in another country and we'll see where the next two years take me, to be honest, and where I end up. And a definite aim uh, for me is to later on come back to the Czech Republic and Essentially, all the knowledge and all the experiences that you attain from your studies abroad, just to take them and apply them back in your home country, because combining those points of view can have a really good effect and it can improve the life of the people living in a country, uh, which is, yeah, no matter which way, it is one of my big goals. And also maybe you're wondering, how is this bachelor's? What should you expect of it? So for everybody, I won't lie, the first year, especially at the beginning, I remember there was quite a lot to handle. Uh, when I compare it to uh, what I was supposed to learn during high school in one day, and then what I was supposed to learn at UFA in one day, um, there was a massive difference. And it is true that uh, quite a lot of people find it so hard that uh, they do not finish the first year. Uh, I won't lie about that. But the truth is that once you get past that, if you're really motivated, it, wouldn't, it will not be a problem. It's mainly a matter of motivation. If you're motivated, you can probably do it. Then once you've passed the first year, everything starts to mellow down a bit i would say so you have more time for yourself to pursue um other academic interests or uh, find a job or be part of a committee work with a group of people on whatever project that comes to your mind and that is great um compared to some other subjects which i'm not sure if it's the case in the netherlands but in the czech republic if you study medicine you do not have a life for six years um in economics you have a life and you can choose what you want to do in some of the free time that you get apart from your studies and this is also related to what i would definitely tell everybody starting economics is that the program will really be how you make it. It is only up to you whether you will do the bare minimum in the program and just, you know, get some grades and be okay with it. Or if you will be on a lookout for new opportunities, uh, possibilities, uh, being part of, um, of a studio association, for example, you know, searching for that job even after your first year. Everything is possible. It will really be up to you in how you make the program. 
and do look at all the information that Uva is sending to you because there's always something that comes up where you can apply and don't worry, even if you apply and you are turned down, you at least tried and you shouldn't take it personally because in those instances where you succeed, it can lead you to places that you would um, not expect. So really be active and put in that extra effort to make the program great for your own. And I think that's it for me. Uh, the next student, I believe uh, he's Dutch, is Jochen. And yeah, let's see, it's, it's yours. Yes, indeed. Hello, my name is Jurgen. I'm indeed Dutch. And I would like to tell you like why I chose for this study and why Amsterdam and all that stuff. So first of all, um, I was uh, in high school. I had a very technical study program. So I did um, science, physics, uh, chemistry. And I really like math, but I actually didn't have economics in my uh, profile. So um, what I did, I was interested in it, but I couldn't choose it. I chose econometrics in Rotterdam and I liked it, but I found out it wasn't exactly what I wanted, but I found that um, economics was really interesting. So what I did was, oh, I'm going to study econo uh, economics and business economics now. And the only thing that I just needed to know was where. Um, so. I asked around, I asked some friends, I asked my family like uh, that had experience at different universities and eventually like um, my mind was set to the UFA because uh, well friend, my friends had good uh, recommendations and it was just uh, yeah online I saw that it had a good uh, what is it called it was uh, well uh, the books like it, it was like a top university especially for the Netherlands. So um, I applied and I immediately found out that it was really nice, really nice people, really nice atmosphere. Uh, so I immediately found my spot and I, yeah, I never uh, doubted myself uh, after that, after I met people here. It was just amazing. So um, I'm currently uh, doing the business economic side and with a specialization in finance. And I would like to um, do a master in that as well. And after that, work for another company and eventually uh, get my own company. Um, not sure in what yet, but yeah, it's basically my plan. I uh, want to just apply whatever I'm, I've learned from the study and which is a lot. So I hope uh, I, I can make that do. And um, yeah, so. Um, I think I'll give the word to Paula again. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Jürgen, and thank you, Tomasz, for sharing your experiences. I always find that very inspiring, and I'm sure our audience has the same. Um, now that uh, you've all heard from our inspiring students and our dedicated program director, um, let me sum up the advantages of studying at our faculty. Um, yeah, one big advantage, of course, is the challenging and interesting program that um, uh, we can offer you. This provides you with excellent uh, chances on the job market uh, later on. And then uh, what's also really, really nice about this program is, um, as Sylvia explained, in the third year, the first semester, you have the freedom to choose and make the program your own. You can yeah, go on exchange or do an internship for credits uh, in combination with electives or do a minor. So you really have a chance to do something that you are really interested in, and that's a big advantage. Then we do have an excellent international um, reputation. So if you graduate, uh, you have really good chances for your future career. And um, what's also but one aspect that I really, really love about uh, the faculty is that um, we have more than 90 different nationalities on campus. That's really, really nice and inspiring. You get to meet a lot of people from different backgrounds and um, that can be really good for your personal growth and also to prepare you for the international job market. So in sum, we offer an inspiring education that will provide you um, yeah, with a really excellent basis for the international job market. 
Um, if that sounds appealing to you, um, these are the next steps. Let me tell you a bit more about what you can uh, do next um, if you're interested. I would uh, recommend to uh, delve deeper into the program, explore the Open House uh, website, or you can watch the recording again, or maybe compare it to other recordings from other sessions if you are in doubt between two pro programs. Yeah, have a good look at the information that is available online and that was presented today. We will also share some useful links in the chat at the end of the session um, that you can uh, use uh, to find everything you need or if you want to watch the recording again. Then I would also recommend um, to register for the online experience days because this is a unique chance to experience firsthand um, how education looks like at our faculty. And um, you can do that by following one lecture and one seminar, and that takes place at the end of uh, November, the 30, uh, 23rd and uh, the 25th of November. And the registration for the online experience day opens in the first week of November. But we will share a link at the end where you can already sign up so you get a, um, a reminder when the registration opens. Um, so yeah. Do all these things um, and if the program feels like the right match, make sure to apply on time. And um, yeah, we definitely hope to see many of you again in September 22. Now let me give uh, the floor to Ryan from admissions office. He will tell you a bit more about the um, admission procedure. Thank you. Well, hello everyone. I'm here on behalf of the uh, admissions office of the UFA and I will tell you something about the uh, application process. Uh, but before I start, I want to say that there's a lot of questions about the uh, individual, individual um, entry requirement questions and we cannot offer feedback on that eligibility um, in this session. So please check the diploma calculator for um, uh, the specific um, specifications, specifications per program, per diploma. Um, well, after you made your decision uh, of your program, the very first thing you'll need to do is to register in StudyLink. Uh, this is the national registration system for all students. And after this registration, uh, you'll be able to activate your UFA Net ID. And with that, you can start your application in our admission portal, which is called Embark. Uh, please make sure that the program you've uh, registered for in StudyLink matches the one uh, you select in Embark. That's very important. Uh, we can't stress enough um, that it's very important to submit a complete application in Embark. Uh, it must include uploads of your certified documents, your diploma, your transcripts, uh, English tests, and possibly your mathematics proficiency. Please check uh, the uh, entry requirements per um, program for the specific conditions of the math mathematics and English. I will share a link in the chat which will guide you to that specific website okay um what's discussed in the chat as well is, is the tool we've built for you guys to check if your previous education is of a sufficient level level to grant access to our bachelor program uh, the diploma calculator i will share the link once more as well in the chat for everyone Okay. Uh, it will also tell you if you need to do an additional uh, mathematics test for uh, access for the program. Um, after you submitted the complete application, our work at the admissions office will start. We will check your files, data, and documents. And if the application is complete, you receive an admission decision within six weeks. Um, what well, a big part of the application progress is done by this point, but you're not done yet because we still need um, you to confirm your participation after you received a an, uh, an, uh, conditional or unconditional offer from us. Without this confirmation uh, from your end, we are not able to finalize the application. So please remember that it's very important. And that's in, well, big steps, the uh, application process. I will give the word back to Paula and you can start ask questions in the, uh, in the Q&A about it. Thank you, uh, Ryan, for clarifying that. Um, now, uh, let's start with the Q&A. I can see that we got many questions. It's nice that you are all interested. Um, let me start with the first question. Um, 
that got also a lot of likes. So many people want to know that. Uh, what is the difference between this and uh, business administration? Uh, Sylvia, could you answer that question for us? I can, I think, I hope. Uh, yeah, so in the end, um, business administration perhaps um, is very similar to business economics. So I think that economics is really different than business administration. There you focus also not only on, on business decisions, but also really like more um, macroeconomic decisions and really decisions of individuals, the microeconomic decisions. But if we would compare business economics and business administration, then uh, at business administration, they approach it more broadly. Uh, so they look more at different fields outside of economics, while within business economics, the focus is much more on analytical tools uh, to try to understand uh, business problems. So it's really like business administration has a broader approach uh, by also introducing other disciplines. Uh, and within business economics, the focus is much more economic and uh, analytical, and this is also what uh, you will get back, uh, or this is the main difference. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, we have another question. Uh, what percentage of students are female in this bachelor degree? Um, Sylvia, I don't know if you know the percentage, uh, maybe otherwise, Alain Dankas, my colleague, is very good with statistics and numbers. I don't know if, Alain, maybe you have an idea about the rough percentage female uh, male students? Yes, yeah, around 40% uh, is female. Yeah, that would have been my guess. Oh, perfect. So you <laughs> are both seeing. know. Um, thank you for clarifying that. Um, so the next uh, question, um, what are the salary prospects for this uh, program? Sylvia, can I give that to you again? Yes, of course. Uh, of course, salary is not everything. Uh, I mean, um, uh, I think it's also very important that you enjoy uh, the type of work that you are doing. And uh, of course, salary is important uh, to some extent. And um, it's a bit uh, difficult to generally answer this because uh, our students uh, end up in very different um, um Jobs. So some end up in more governmental institutions where normally the, the wages are lower than, for example, the ones that end up in business. But in general, um, there has been a study of uh, the uh, SAO uh, in Amsterdam and they uh, were combining different uh, programs or, or comparing different programs. And there they uh, saw that um, the that uh, graduates from the University of Amsterdam uh, were doing quite well in terms compared to uh, other uh, universities in terms of salary. Thank you for uh, that answer again. Um, we have another question about uh, mathematics. Uh, yeah, approximately what percentage of this course consists of mathematics? Maybe I can give the word to one of the students so you can tell a bit more about your experience with mathematics. Because there's one course in the first year, Mathematics 1, and if you choose the major economics, you get another Mathematics course. But maybe it's nice to hear from one of the students, uh, Jürgen or Tomasz. Um, yeah, some uh, courses are a lot of Mathematics. So, for example, Mathematics or Statistics, and you do apply it in other courses. But yeah, it's just you get a basis and then to apply it, but I'm, I'm not sure how, if I can give a percentage for that. Yeah, you, I don't think you have to give a percentage, yeah. but just to tell more about your experiences with that, do you, did you find it uh, difficult or is it okay, the level of mathematics? Uh... Um, I've noticed that a lot of people find the first course, so mathematics, really difficult, but if you pass that, then it get, gets easier. And um, especially uh, when you do it maybe again, if, if you don't pass it the first time, uh, a lot of people pass it the second time because they already have it in their mind. They have tried it before. So that helps a lot. Uh, and then you can manage the other courses as well if you pass that, I think. Thank you um, for clarifying that. I hope uh, that helps the rest to make a decision. Um, let me see, some of the questions are already being answered, I can see. Um, 
Uh, we have another question. Let me see. Uh, I'm studying economics in IB. To what extent will that be helpful for this course? I think it's always good to have some uh, prior knowledge in economics, right, Sylvia? Maybe you can say a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. So I think that um, uh, I think what you mostly need is to have an interest in topics that we discuss. And then most of the uh, things will go well. And the same holds a bit also for mathematics. So some are very afraid. But if you are really interested in the topics, then you will manage in terms of like you also are willing to put in effort. Uh, and when it comes to economics, so some uh, of the topics will come back. So that's uh, quite useful in some courses. Um, so we hear sometimes from students that, for example, things like accounting, that's something that you really get also within, uh, if you have like an economic background, you have had already some uh, elements of it. Well, if you don't have it, uh, then you, you haven't seen them, so you have to start from zero. Uh, but uh, in terms of the economics, it is a bit, it, we go further. Uh, so it's not so that uh, if you haven't had economics, that then your uh, disadvantage is, uh, is very large. Uh, but yeah, there are some topics you have never seen before. So. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, we have another question about the uh, acceptance rate for this program. Um, uh, maybe, yeah, I think all the, if you, the most important thing is that you fulfill the entry requirements, of course. Um, so I'm not uh, so if you fulfill the entry requirements, there's no extra selection procedure or something like that. So you have to make sure that you fulfill that and apply, and then you can get accepted. I hope that answers your question. Um, let me see. Um, these are very specific questions um, about the entry requirements. We can't uh, go into details about that. Um, uh, we have another question. Is this a very competitive program in this university? Um, Sylvia, maybe you can say something about that, if that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, if I know what it means uh, to be competitive, uh, in the sense that, um, uh, so within our education, we have absolute grading. So in that respect, we don't really have common competition among uh, students. But uh, some students are very competitive in getting good grades. Uh, and this is mostly because they want to, uh, they, they, they think it's important for their future career in terms of either going to work or applying for master programs. So uh, some students are quite uh, competitive in terms of, uh, of doing well in the program. Uh, but I'm not sure whether this is what the question is about. But we don't have really like uh, inbuilt competition in terms of that. Uh, we have like these, we don't have relative grading. Uh, so it's everything is absolute. Thank you for clarifying. Um, we have another uh, question that is interesting, maybe for many students, I would say, what minor options are there to choose from? So in the third year, the first semester, you can choose between the different options. And there are actually more than 60 minors that are taught in English that you can choose from at the UVA alone. Uh, so you have a lot of choice and you can actually, the minor gives you in-depth knowledge in a certain field and you can follow minors and yeah, all the other faculties in philosophy, art history. Um, so there's actually a lot being offered in almost any field you can think of. At our faculty, you can even follow a minor on sustainability. So it's a nice chance to get in this knowledge in another field. I hope that answers your question. Um, uh, let me see. For the next question. Um, because some questions are already being answered. Let me check. Uh, Sorry, just one second, because there are a lot of individual questions that are uh, in the process of being answered. Um, yeah, let me see. There are, oh yeah. Um, are there career fairs where employers come to the UVA uh, to recruit? Um, it's maybe uh, nice to know that we, uh, yeah, we do have a EB Career Center, a Career Center at our faculty, and they offer many career-related events and uh, workshops. We have uh, career weeks. We have uh, 
skills weeks and uh, yeah, also chances to meet uh, recruiters. So there is a lot uh, of support or also if you, uh, because I saw before in the chat, the question, if you need help with your CV, um, that is also support is being offered. Uh, you can also book appointments with a career coach if you need help to apply for jobs. So it's good to know that we have a lot uh, ongoing on campus actually. Um, I hope that answers your questions. Um, uh, this one, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, let me go back one second. Uh, um, Is the program more theory-based or real-world problem-based? Um, Sylvia, could you say something about that? It's a bit of a broad question. I love broad questions. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, so I think um, it is, um, especially the, the first uh, two years are very theory-based. Um, then in the last year where you specialize more and you choose electives, uh, you can make it a bit more uh, practical also by doing, for example, an internship, but also by choosing electives that have a more uh, practical application or by choosing minors that are more like uh, practically. Uh, so I, uh, what we do have, uh, and that's um, uh, apart from the theory, in some courses, they, they do make use of, uh, of cases where you make the connection with uh, the real world. So then you can see the direct connection uh, with theory and practice. But especially the first two years are uh, theory based. Thank you um, for clarifying that. Um, let me see. Uh, oh, yeah, that's also a nice question. I would say how many previous students stay in the Netherlands to work after graduating? Um, Sylvia, do you have an idea? I think I, based on my experience, I hear from quite a lot of students who stay actually, especially yeah, for a master, but then also stay to work here. But I don't have any statistics or percentages. Uh, I also don't have, I don't have statistics either, um, but uh, uh, if I uh, I do have an anecdotal evidence <laughs> in the sense that at graduation I uh, I speak to uh, some of the students uh, and some of them decided to go into a bachelor. We have a very uh, international bachelor program, uh, so we um, the majority of our students are international. And uh, I speak to them, and and some indeed have uh, decided to postpone the master and uh, to work in the Netherlands. So uh, people like working in the Netherlands. Um, and um, I, so I do think that some really see it as a, uh, as a, uh, as a good option after uh, studying. And um, so anecdotal, yes, we do see it. Uh, statistically, I cannot tell you. Okay, thank you. But good that we have the same anecdotal experience at least. Um, another question, uh, what is the dropout ratio after the first year? Um, Ale, can I maybe give that question to you? Because I know you are so good with the statistics and I should know, but I forgot again. So um, maybe you can answer that for us. Yes. Or rough uh, esti estimate. Yeah, well, uh, there, are, there are two groups, actually, students that, you know, can keep up with the program and the students that decide, you know, to take on another program at the end of the year. And I think around 25% come in the latter category. So they start the program and find out, okay, this is not the right program for me. Um, and around 5 to 10% is not uh, at the end of the year. Uh, uh, well, just they find out that they're not uh, suited for the program. Uh, so around 56, 70% of students uh, are there in the second year. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, then another question, what differs, uh, or how does the bachelor degree um, economics and business economics differ from econometrics, actuarial science and business analytics? Sylvia, could you say a bit about that? Yes, of course, of course. So um, uh, economics and business economics uh, has the toolbox of mathematics and statistics and really applies that to decisions within firms of individuals, really more uh, applied uh, to, to real decisions. 
in econometrics, uh, you get um, trained more heavily in mathematics and statistics. So that means that you get a more thorough uh, training in, uh, in these topics. So if you are very good in mathematics and uh, in statistics, and it's really something that you like very much, uh, and uh, then perhaps uh, econometrics, actuarial sciences, and business analytics would fit better. Uh, with your uh, choices. If you do like mathematics and you are good in it or you, you really like it uh, and you like to apply it to 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 decisions, uh, real uh, decisions, then uh, I think uh, economics and business economics has a bit more like uh, this. So I think it's more like uh, within economics and business economics, we have a bit less of skills, uh, but more of intuition, while in econometrics they have much more of skills and perhaps a bit less of uh, more theoretically. Thank you um, for clarifying that. Um, uh, we have another ex uh, question about exchange. That's maybe nice also for everyone to hear more about. Um, could we have some examples of universities we can study abroad at doing this program? Um, we do have a really, really large network of partner universities. Maybe for some of you, that's why the, that's one of the reasons why you are interested in the um, UVA. Um, so we do have a really large program. You can go to the States, you can go to Singapore, you can go to Australia. There are a lot of options internationally, but also within Europe. I don't want to say you can go to every city, but you can go to many large cities on exchange. Um, so we do have a really good exchange program. And if you uh, go to the student website, maybe someone can share the link or otherwise I will do that later. You can find the, there's a link of the digital world map where you can find a good overview of all the partner universities that our university has. Um, so that's actually, uh, oh yes, uh, my colleague already shared the link in the chat. Thank you uh, for that. Um, then uh, let me see, we have another question. Are classes uh, still held online at the UVA? Uh, we actually, uh, we are back uh, to on-campus teaching. We are really, really happy about that. Uh, so um, if everything goes well, uh, uh, you can follow on-campus classes uh, like a normal student before the pandemic uh, when you apply or when you start in September 22. Um, let me see. Uh, um, we do have another question. Uh, let me see. Um, um, we do have a lot of more individual questions. Um, maybe otherwise it's an idea um, if we can, uh, yeah, also, I don't know if that's okay for the rest, but maybe we can spend or spend some time, uh, we can close the session now and spend some time to answer the individual sessions, the last questions, the last minutes, because I think uh, most of them are very specific or have been answered already in a different form. So I would suggest that we each spend some time uh, to answer individual questions now. And then- Can I, can yes. I say something? Because of I do course. see quite a bit of questions, uh, but I'm not sure whether they are being answered uh, yeah. uh, or have been answered in uh, with respect to the differences between programs. So let me say something about it because I do think it's a fair uh, yeah. question. And uh, so when we think about uh, differences between programs, then uh, the faculties that offer economics and business economics programs, uh, that's like, uh, and what I compare is uh, the UFA, the FU, uh, the Erasmus University in Rotterdam, Maastricht, Groningen, and uh, Tilburg. These are, the programs in, in large lines are very similar because we all have to offer micro, we all have to offer macro, and uh, we all offer some mathematics or statistics. So it's, uh, there will be not large differences. So the differences will be mostly um, uh, that you get uh, different opportunities perhaps to fill in your program in, in a specific semester, uh, that there's a focus on some different topics within these uh, universities. But in terms of programs, they are very similar. Um, perhaps uh, the only difference then if we look at Tilburg, that they also offer a real only economics uh, program. So if you are really only interested in economics, then that might be a choice. But all others that offer economics and business economics will offer very similar programs uh, uh, in terms of the type of uh, courses that you have to take. Uh, so there will be not so much difference. Then it's really like 
a matter of taste, uh, which university fits best with your personality. Thank you for um, clarifying that. Then um, I would suggest that uh, yeah, we end the session now. And for those of you who still have open specific questions in the chat, we will spend the last minutes to answer your questions. Um, thank you for joining. It was a pleasure to have you all. And uh, thank you, of course, also to our students and our program director. And um, yeah, we will continue to answer questions um, to help you. Thank you.